What's up everyone, TerraQuake here, and welcome on back to the Pokemon Heart Gold walkthrough. In the last part, we headed back to New Barktown, fought our new rival on the way over there, and then named him and came back here to Route 30 to pick up our brand new team member, Spinarak, aka Charlotte, and... Um, yeah, what's well, kind of cool in this game, not only do the Pokemon follow you, but you can like interact with them behind you. But today I want to get a lot of things done, so we're going to get going here on Route 30. We're going to try to get to Violet City and also check out some of the areas around Violet City, like uh, Route 32 and the Ruins of Alf. Anyways, here is infamous Youngster Joey. Oh, the memes about Youngster Joey and his top percentage Rattata. You know what they are. But unfortunately, Spinarak cannot take down that top percentage Rattata. Yeah, Spinarak being only level 2 right now just kind of stinks. Now, you might be noticing that I'm finally reco uh, recording during the daytime. You can kind of tell with uh, the background and everything. But to be honest, I'm still recording at night. I just changed the time on my computer to be day. And I will explain why I did that towards the end of this video. You guys might be able to figure out why I did that as we progress and yeah luckily with Spinarak only being at level two he's getting like literally a level every single battle anyways right there youngster joey just asked for our phone number and that brings up a good point in this game as i talked about when we first got the pokey gear random trainers will ask you to uh give you their phone number for a rematch or something and because in my walkthroughs i don't like to do any off-screen grinding at least i try not to unless i you know, really have to. I uh, I just don't like to do any grinding. I like to make it a bit more challenging. You can tell that I didn't do any off-screen grinding with uh, Spinarak here. He was still only level 2. So I've decided to not give my phone number to any of the people that will rematch you. However, I will give my phone number to the people that I think I remember, you know, either give you an item or give you some other useful information. Like, I know there's a guy coming up that will give you random berries, so I'll probably give my phone number to him because, you know, getting berries would be pretty nice. Now, unfortunately, even though, um, you know, you can rematch the trainers and stuff, sometimes they'll just randomly call you for no good reason and tell you a bunch of worthless information. But basically, I'm just going to try to give my phone numbers to the people that I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. I know a uh, couple people for sure will give you, like, you know, it's the only way to get like a Leaf Stone or Fire Stone or something like that. So I'll try to remember. If not, then I apologize. But I know for a fact there's a couple of people that I just have ingrained in my head that will actually do something good for you. Now, rematching trainers is not a bad idea. When I played through this game, not only the first time, but like a couple of times, you know, I always gave my phone number to people just because it was a great way to go back and grind. Because throughout the game, you're just going to, you know, be getting random calls from people and uh, then when it comes time for the Elite Four, you might want to actually go back and fight them because they will give you more EXP than the wild Pokemon and stuff. So it's not a bad idea. The only issue is, yeah, it can get a little annoying with the um, trainers randomly calling you and telling you about a bunch of junk. Anyways, right there's a hidden potion, and you are not a trainer, but the guy coming up is, and he is a bug catcher. That's right, bug catchers are still here. They have made a return. Don't think they were gone. Bug catchers, they're around for a while, aren't they? Or are they even in Gen 5? I can't remember if bug catchers are in Generation 5 or not. And Poison Sting is Stab, and it's honestly doing, like, more damage than I thought, at least to the Pidgey that we fought back there. Unfortunately, Caterpie's able to eat it a bit better, but it'll definitely take Spinarak, you know, some time to really get things going. Luckily, it evolves at level 22 into Ariados, which is relatively early, probably around the third gym or so so yeah that's pretty nice it'll be a good boost in power and i cannot wait to use an area dose that is for sure and of course i'm not going to get a single poison on this caterpie whenever someone goes for poison sting on me oh they poison me all the time but if i get or if i am the one using poison sting oh no i i do not get poisoned not one bit all right, so one more Poison Sting will do the trick, and then I don't want this battle, like, taking forever, so for his other mods, I might just do a bit of switch training. Of course, if you're new to Pokemon, which I'd assume you aren't if you're watching this walkthrough, but hey, maybe you are, um, 
then, you know, you can always just switch your Pokemon or put a Pokemon that's lower leveled out in the front and then switch it out immediately and it'll still gain some EXP. And you know what? You only have one other Caterpie. I'm going to stay in. And that's kind of funny that Spinarak got scary face. Don't get me wrong. Spiders are pretty scary. I talked about it in the last episode. If there was like a giant Spinarak chasing me in real life, I would be running for my life. But... I mean, look at this thing. It's kind of got a cute face. I can see how Ariados has a scary face, but like Spinarak's not that scary. But I'll take it, I guess. I'm really just waiting on like an attacking move. Now, I know we'll get the TM for, what is it, Fury Cutter? No, U-Turn from the Azalea Town Gym. And I'm hoping he can learn that because I don't know if we'll get a bug type move before then. I haven't checked out Spinarak's level up moves or anything, but U-Turn would definitely be useful. I know it'll automatically switch us out, but... I think it'll still be worth it. All right, so down goes the bug catcher, and that's actually it for Route 30, because right up here, it changes into Route 31 somewhere as we're heading through this grass. I thought it changed earlier, if I'm going to be honest, or did I just completely skip it? I swear it changes to Route 31. Anyways, as we hit Route 31, just know that the new Pokemon you can find here is Bellsprout, and basically along with Bellsprout, you can get like all the same Pokemon from Route 30, and... Yeah, I guess it just, like, never changed over or the little, you know, drop-down thing didn't come up. Now, right there's a potion, and in here is the Dark Cave. Now, the Dark Cave is obviously dark, and in order to, uh, you know, get through here a lot easier, you might want to have Flash, which you can't get. Well, actually, you'll get very soon in the game. And the Dark Cave has three different entrances throughout Johto, and it's kind of just located here in between, you know, Cherry Grove City... New Bark Town and Blackthorn City, that whole area. And there's different sections that you can access depending on which uh, entrances you enter on in. However, you won't be able to explore all of it until you have like Rock Smash and Surf and probably Flash. But as we're in here right now, if my memory serves me right, there's one item we can get. I think it's like a potion or Pokeball, but we might as well grab it. Also, I guess you can find Geodudes and I think Dunsparce too. That's kind of like the really new one. And here is the item I was talking about. It is a potion, as predicted. So, yeah, might as well pick that up. It's kind of annoying to go through here without repels, as you can tell. But, um, oh, you can get Zubat also. Zubat kind of weak. Of course, it eventually becomes strong. You just got to have a little bit of patience. But, yeah, it offers some new Pokemon for you to grab. And let's head back on outside. And Route 31 is pretty short. So we are almost to Violet City. Real quickly, there's a black apricorn that we can grab here. And then this guy in the pink shirt, he's going to be asleep right now. But there's a Pokemon and an item that we'll get later on by Goldenrod City. And you can take it back to this guy and uh, he will give you a TM. So be sure to keep him in mind. Now right there is a Pokeball. And then right here is another bug catcher who, honestly, this battle could take a while just because he has four, you know, Annoying little bug types, but I will show it off because it's actually the last battle we're doing in this episode. I know, not really an action-packed episode, but don't worry, the next two episodes are going to be action-packed because we'll be going through the Sprout Tower in Part 4 and then the first gym in Part 5. So, yeah, be on the lookout for that. Get hyped, baby. Get pumped. And for now, I'm just going to keep on stinging this Caterpie with my little poison stinger or something. And, uh, yeah, that should work out. I know he has a Weedle, too. Keep in mind, Caterpie and Weedle, same with, like, Metapod and Kakuna. They're both virgin, uh, version exclusive. So, if you are trying to get one of them in your playthrough, make sure you're playing the right game. And, of course, my dog is at the door. JD. He always comes to the door when it's shut, when I'm trying to record, just at the worst possible times. So, if you hear him in the background, I apologize. I'll let him in you know, in a second, maybe in between episodes, because I'm going to try to get a few videos done tonight. So, yeah, but I swear, it's just always at the worst moments. <laughs> like, why? I get that I don't have my door closed for, like, most of the day, but, I mean, do you really want to get in my room that badly? Because most of the time, I'll let you in, and then 10 minutes later, he'll want out again. So, he's just a confusing dog. He just doesn't want to make up his own mind, or he can't make up his own mind, really. And looks like we'll get to level 6 here before heading into Violet City, which is good. And we'll actually be using Spinarak a lot in the Sprout Tower because 
By the name, I'm sure you can tell there's going to be a lot of Bell Sprouts, and Totodile is not too fit to take on those Bell Sprouts, so Spinarak will be coming in handy. And yeah, he just gained more levels than I thought he would from the four trainers we fought, which is very nice. And there's another Pokemon that won't really help in the Sprout Tower, but you know, it is going to be coming on the team. It will be my next team member. Does it have to do with me changing the time of day on my computer? Maybe, maybe. You will have to wait and see. And he actually saved his Weedle for last, which is kind of weird. I feel like this guy always like sends out his Weedle second or third, but no, I guess he wants to save the best for last. To be fair, for this guy's team, Weedle is the best because he's got three level two Caterpies. So, I mean, you know, that's just not hard competition to beat. And these guys can string shot me all they want, but Charlotte is a base. He's taking their tackles. Look at that. Only one hit point. And it's not like I've raised my defenses or anything. That's actually really surprising. Yo, maybe Spinarak's just that Pokemon of the walkthrough that, like, surprises me. Like, you know, sort of like Wormadam and the Platinum walkthrough. And just a couple of other mons that we've used because I always like to use new Pokemon that I've never used before and that probably don't get used too often. All right, so for Weedle, since you're part poison, I'm going to switch out, take it the easy way, and we will go to Totodile, who hopefully won't get poisoned here. Oh, yeah, why Why did I even say that? Of course he's going to get poisoned, you know? It's, uh, it's me playing this game. Let's remember that. Now, luckily, this is the last trainer for us to battle. And Water Gun is almost going to do the trick. Now, keep in mind, the first gym is a Flying-type gym, so even though Totodile won't get too much action in the Sprout Tower, he's going to get plenty of action in the first gym, that's for sure, because Spinarak's not going to be able to do too much against those Flying-types. I mean, maybe we could get in there for a Lucky Poison, and that's about it. Anyways, Bug Catcher Wade finally goes down, and this is the guy that I was talking about earlier. If you give him your phone number, he'll just call you up, and say he has some berries for us to pick. I think it's berries, not apricorns, right? It may be apricorns. I actually can't remember. I guess we'll find out later on. Um, At least in the Gen 2 games, it's berries. I know that for sure because apricorns weren't a thing yet. And as we're going through the gate to Violet City, Lyra's going to stop us again. And she'll give us the Versus Seeker. And if... Uh, or no, Versus Recorder, sorry. I was about to go on about how the versus seeker you know can allow you to rematch trainers but i don't think you even get that in this game because you can already rematch them with the poke gear but yeah versus recorder allows you to record battles or something like that and here we are in violet city now real quickly this crazy guy outside of the um pokemon center will be asking for shards and if you have the different colored shards he will give you different types of berries so just a nice little trade system he's got going on there now the guy to the right of the pokemon center desk here um just by the pc his name is actually i think primo or something like that let me see yeah primo and basically there's like he hosts a tv show and um there's different codes that you can say to him and depending on which code you say you can get either a Mareep, Wooper, or Slugma. You can actually end up getting all three. So, yeah, out of eggs, by the way. He won't just uh, give the Pokemon to you straight up. You have to hatch them first. But it's really cool to get those three mons, like, this early on in the game. To be fair, though, you can find Mareep and Wooper in, like, the next route. But Slugma is a pretty nice mon to get. Now, if you talk to this guy, he'll be looking for a Bell Sprout, which can be caught on the last route, as I said. And he'll trade you an Onix. Remember, traded Pokemon... They might disobey you at times. However, they will um, gain a boosted amount of experience. And Onyx could definitely come in handy for the next gym. Now, just up here on this little island across the bridges, there's a hidden Pokeball right next to the little kid. And across the second bridge is Sprout Tower. We'll be checking that out next time just because it has a lot of trainers. All right, so this guy right here, you can talk to him, and he'll ask if you've, like, defeated the gym or not. If you say no, then he'll take you over to the trainer school in order to learn a couple of things. So if you're new to Pokemon, you know what the trainer school is. Um, you can just go learn about all the different status effects and stuff. And that's about it for Violet City besides the Sprout Tower and Gym. So let's move on to... This is actually going to be Route 36, and right now there's not much to do. 
I don't think this lady, yeah, she talks about an odd tree blocking the way. And then this guy, yeah, he's the one that gives us the HM for Rock Smash. I couldn't remember if uh, he did or not. So I wanted to make sure he did. But there you go. You got Rock Smash. Now you will need the um, first gym badge to use it outside mm -hmm. of battle. And anyways, here's the odd tree that that lady was talking about. I'm sure you guys all know that eventually becomes a Sudowoodo. Heck, we used a Sudowoodo in the Pokemon Silver walkthrough, and we won't be able to deal with that until later, so that's kind of blocking us from going that way. Now, down south of Route 36 is the Ruins of Alf, and this is, of course, the place where you can find all the unknown. I don't think there's too many items we can get right now, just because we don't have Surf or anything, but we can go ahead and solve, like, the first puzzle which is actually a uh, Kabuto puzzle, so I will do this real fast. And there we go, I solved it. Now the floor is just going to open right under us, and that takes us down into the little ruins down here, and this uh, super nerd is going to see that we solved one of the puzzles, and there's actually three different puzzles here in the ruins of Alf, and he'll give us the unknown report. I think that's a way of like keeping track of all the unknown you've caught or something like that. Or just uh, keeping data on them. But yeah, the Ruins of Alf, it's a very interesting area. I mean, Unknown is a very interesting and kind of weird Pokemon. But we went ahead and solved that first puzzle. They're kind of just little puzzle pieces that you um, move around and stuff on the bottom screen. And try to make a picture of the Pokemon. I'm not sure if I'll do the other two. Because the other two you can't do right now. You have to wait until um, you get surf and come back through the union cave which is a place that we can't reach until after the first gym anyways and we don't get surf until after like the fourth gym so we don't have to worry about that for now but by solving that puzzle that does give you the opportunity to catch unknowns i think the other two puzzles allow you to catch like more versions of the unknowns maybe like the exclamation points and stuff like that but uh yeah if you want to try to use an unknown it's going to be pretty tough because they're kind of weak and they only get hidden power so yeah, have fun doing that. I'm for sure not using one. And don't think you're stuck down here forever. Um, you can just climb up this ladder and head right on outside. And I don't think there's any items to pick up down there. And again, there's really just not much to do here besides that one puzzle for now. Right up here is a little building. It, basically, they just research Unknown and the Ruins of Alf. And yeah, you'll be able to access the rest of this place with Surf later on in the game. So the last stop for today's episode is Route 32. Now, Route 32 is blocked off for the most part because you won't be able to get past this dude until you get the first gym badge. However, there's a little bit of grass here, and there's a lot of Pokemon that if you're looking to add to your team, then you've got some options. And Pokemon Soul Silver, you can get Ekans, and you can also find Mareep, Wooper, and Hoppip on this route. And one of those Pokemon I am looking for right now. And here is that Mon. It is Hoppip. Now, I'm glad I found a level 6 one. It's a little higher level than some of the other ones in here. And Hoppip, you know, it's pretty awful to begin. You guys might be wondering, but what the heck are you doing, Derek? Like, Hoppip starts with, like, Splash and Synthesis. It can't even attack. But don't worry. This thing is going to become a great addition to the team. I feel like Jump Bluff is a little underrated, and... Hoppip will be fully evolved by the time it's like level 30, I think. So that's a plus. You don't have to wait too long for it. And it's a really cool typing. Grass flying. It's a three-stage evolution line. I've never used it before. So I am ready to uh, give this thing a shot. And it's nice that we now already have a water type and a grass type. To be fair, it doesn't have any grass type moves, but that is okay. So we got the cotton weed Pokemon. Haha. <laughs> Cotton weed made me think of something. Hold on. Hold on. It's going to pop up on the screen in just a second. And... Oh, wait. No, it doesn't. Okay, I'll show you in the party. Oh, wait. No, y'all can't see that. All right. Let me show you in the summary. There we go. 420. Oh, man. 420 and Pokemon. They go together like Romeo and Juliet. All right. So, we got... 420 the hop that wow that just came out of nowhere but i think it's hilarious so as i said right now this thing literally no splash and synthesis it cannot attack whatsoever now i'm pretty sure once we get the tm for bullet seed which i think happens soon maybe after the first gym yeah it's on route 32 then i'm pretty sure it can learn bullet seed for its first stab move before then it's only gonna have like tackle so 
Hop it will be a work in progress. We're gonna be switch training it a lot. I wish we had the EXP share. Unfortunately, we do not get that this early on in the game, but it's okay. I'm excited to use it. I know the team's looking weak for now, but I feel like that's how all of our teams have looked in the walkthroughs, and then by the end, they are just a bunch of beasts. And that is where I'm going to call it a day for today's episode. Next time, we are exploring the Sprout Tower in order to, in order to open up access to the first gym. So for now, have a great rest of your day, and until next time, deuces.